they have smoking, and they also have occupational exposures, including asbestos. And then the females basically have exposure to cigarettes. This is a slide looking at uh, historical events uh, as it relates to smoking. The, uh, as we started here, there was very little cigarette use. This is number of cigarettes in millions. And it just keeps going, uh, reaches a slight peak in the early depression, and, and then go from the depression years into the end of the Second World War. It just grow, goes almost holistically straight up. It starts to level off, and in the, um, the, the mid-60s, we start uh, things with the Surgeon General's report that studies that smoking is hazardous to your health and causes lung cancer. Um, broadcast ad bans, uh, non-smokers' rights movements begin. Um, I've been incredibly lucky my whole career. I've never had to share an office with a smoker. But it wasn't because of any regulation or policy for the, for the first 20 years of my career. It was just dumb luck. But um, many people were not so fortunate as, as time went on. And then the, the number of cigarette sales went down, went down considerably. And then with the master agreement, this is where the, the uh, tobacco companies uh, put billions of dollars into a pot for state governments to try to keep people from smoking and reduce the level of smoking. To give you an idea of, of how potent the uh, smoking is for the, the race of lung cancer, and these, these figures come to us from a summary um, um, review article uh, with meta-analysis in the Internal uh, Journal of Clinical Oncology, it's just a very recent one, 2011. Um, if you're a non-smoker, and this doesn't control well for secondhand smoke, but if you yourself are a non-smoker, your uh, rate for lung cancer would be about 14.8 per 100,000. If you're a former smoker, uh, loosely defined, but still a former smoker, 75 per 100,000 would be the death rate for that group. But then look at what it is for current smokers who smoke all the way up to the end, or, or that are currently smoking now, 251. Now the ratios don't come out quite right, but generally the rule of thumb here is that if you're a non-smoker versus a smoker, the smoker has a 22 times risk, or 22 fold risk of developing lung cancer as opposed to someone who doesn't smoke. The figures don't add exactly to this because the rule of thumb is taken from a series of other studies. Uh, the ultimate lung cancer disparity has to do with asbestos workers. These are pictures of two gentlemen in the first occupational cohort I ever studied. Uh, they were asbestos workers in East Texas. What they're doing there is they have asbestos insulation that's been put together uh, by in, it's sort of paper mache with a wet slurry um, molded on mandrels. Um, and now these are the hollow asbestos pipes coming out of the drying oven. They're going to slice off the ends and split them down the middle so that they can be put back together around the pipe and then wrapped with, uh, with a temperature-resistant material. But these asbestos workers, the ones who smoke, had 93 times the risk of developing lung cancer compared to non-smokers. This work came out of uh, Dr. Selikoff's uh, uh, group in the uh, late 80s from Mount Sinai, who was a pioneer in asbestos research. Now, the ongoing risk that we have for lung cancer is that we still have cigarette smoking. Now, the good news is we're a lot better than we used to be. Uh, the trends are still going down. Uh, Arkansas, out here, trying to find my arrow, is at uh, 21.5 as of 2009, and the U.S. is 17.9. So we're a bit higher. But the thing is, and I don't have it on the graph here, California is down here at 12%. So it is achievable. Now, of course, I don't know if we need to adapt the California lifestyle or we just need to try to stop smoking. Also, Utah, uh, with a large Mormon population, is more like 8 to 9% uh, of smokers. And so the thing is, we get into this thing where we ought to do as well as the rest of the country. And we probably ought to be looking at, we ought to do as well as the best state that has good data. So instead of being happy with 17.9, we should be happy when we get down to the low teens uh, in Arkansas. And as you see, we have a long way to go to that. 
Um, the smoking um, rates by gender and race, um, the white non-Hispanics, and all of these groups, by the way, whites, blacks, and Hispanics, the females have a lower smoking rate than the males do. The blacks have a uh, higher rate than the, uh, the white males, but just isn't statistically different given the confidence intervals. The Hispanic data is based on very small numbers, so you need to uh, take it with a grain of salt. Also, with the male Hispanics, we're seeing the first, second wave of immigration. So the people who come to uh, Arkansas and relocate to a different part of the country as a very, very small minority uh, are risk takers, and they're especially risk takers if they leave Mexico to come to Texas, to Arkansas, or, or Georgia, or someplace else, with all the risk that that entails of deportation. So with that risk taking behavior, uh, it, it, it's consistent to assume that some of the risk taking behavior goes over to their smoking habits too. This is the uh, lung cancer mortality. Uh, it, it really sort of pretty well mimics the, uh, our smoking experience, even though it's on a 15-year delay from whatever the, you smoked 15 years ago shows up in the mortality rate today. Uh, but we're, um, we're making some progress downward. Uh, when we look at it by race and sex, the, uh, the two broad bars, the top uh, the black bar is black males, the blue bar uh, is, uh, is, is white males. They're both trending downward. The females are here, white male, white females are here, black females are here, and they're remaining quite level. And of course, that goes back to their, their delay in quitting smoking. Uh, that probably puts them at the level mode where the lung cancer rate is going down, even though it's quite modest for the males. To give you an idea of how this really looks without having to try to eyeball it on a trend chart, uh, you can see that the uh, the males are much higher than the females with uh, lung cancer mortality. The um, age-specific rates here are, are, are remarkable. Um, no surprise, the white um, males and black males are higher than the females. But look at the age-specific rates. And this age-specific rate picture is the same for Arkansas as it is for the U.S. rates, where the black males are dying at a much higher rate for the 55, 60, 65, and then they sort of come together at an elevated rate along with that of the white males, where the females stay low all the way throughout. So what's specifically tragic about this is when you die at 55, you're, you're uh, giving up about 25 years of uh, potential years of life remaining if you weren't a smoker and you didn't die of lung cancer. Also, that means you're taken away from your family, who could use your support. Uh, by the time you get to 70, 74, you'd like to think that you've got at least your kids out the door and they haven't come back home yet, so that's maybe not as important. But here, it's a really critical piece. On the uh, stage of diagnosis, the vast majority of the uh, lung cancer cases are, uh, are, um, are diagnosed at the distant stage. And with a distant stage diagnosis, the prognosis is very, very grim. Uh, Five-year survival is only, uh, at least in the uh, Arkansas data, is only about, about 15. Um, with localized, uh, with the five-year survivals are better, but still are only 50%. This is the, uh, we have the base at the health department. And, Dr. Bates is constantly pushing us to look beyond five-year survival rates, so that's why we're looking at 10-year survival rates. But you can, you can see still the precipitous drop here for both white males and black males for the first five years, and then the rates continue to drift downward. And there are, even though the, the